Hey, what's up you guys? Good morning. You got hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. So we have a very special training and I have a very special guest for you guys. I'm really, really excited. So this guy is only 17 years old. He's only been doing affiliate marketing for I think only like six months. I'll let him tell his story and he's already crushing it. He's, he's at the top of many leaderboards. Uh, he's a 3X uh, gold affiliate with Legendary Marketer and he's going to be teaching you how to get buyers and sales to actually take action and buy from your affiliate links. So I want to introduce Daryl Gray. What's up, my man? How are you? Yo, what's up? What's up? I'm happy to be here. Yeah, man. Super excited for you to be here. Guys, let us know if you guys are on live or if you're on the replay, type in a hashtag live down below. Let us know where you're coming from. Daryl is just going to drop some value bombs. I'm really, really excited to have him on. I started noticing you, um, I think like a few months ago, bro, you start just blowing up. I saw your TikTok is I think over 150,000 followers. Your YouTube channel is blowing up. And dude, you've only been doing this for like, what, like four months, six months? Yeah. Like it's really been like the last four or six months. It's been That's insane, bro. That's awesome. Well, and dude, you're only 17 years old and you're a full-time entrepreneur. That That's incredible, bro. You inspire me. I, I really want to know more about your story. Um, like I said, I've only been watching you for the last month or so. So I really want to know your story and kind of, you know, how, how did you get to this point? So tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get into the actual training. So we got people commenting. We got live Sweden. Daryl is the man. Uh, Craig, what's up, my man? So we got people from all over, bro. So yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get into the actual training. So a little bit about myself. Um, so I still am in high school just because it was like, you know, I put 17 years into this. I'm like, I'm going to at least walk out of here with this diploma. Yeah. So, but other than that, I spend more time. I'd like to think working on my business for obvious reasons. But um, before this, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a basketball player mm -hmm. um, prior to, you know, COVID. I had an injury and I was trying to come back. COVID came and, you know, I was like, uh, I can't really, I have health issues. So I was like, can't really afford to begin sick. I'm not fully recovered. I'm out of shape. So basketball wasn't the move for me anymore, really. And um, from there, it was like, you know, I got to find something. And I just know my personality wasn't the one that just really fit like the corporate or the work lifestyle, I guess, the nine to five lifestyle, if you will. And I was like, I need to find something. And I kind of jumped around from business model to business model. Um, I tried things like drop shipping, starting agencies, all of those. Like, don't get me wrong. I made money with pretty much everything I tried. But the problem was... It was it still felt like I was basically just going to get another job um, yeah. because I was doing services. I was doing all of this other stuff. I was fulfilling orders. So it was like a never ending task. And that's kind of uh, what led me to keep searching, keep searching. I ended up finding um, YouTube on YouTube, people talking about affiliate marketing and ClickBank. So that's originally how I found affiliate yeah. marketing. And then I kind of spent some time, you know, dabbling into that, not really getting anywhere, kind of lost, if you will. Um, and then, you know, I kind of got into Facebook organic and that's kind of what introduced me to the high ticket because everyone's like, if you're doing Facebook organic, you need to be promoting a high ticket product. So that's kind of what got me familiar with the whole high ticket model. And then eventually I ended up coming across legendary from a friend. And then that's pretty much how I got to this point. Yeah. Um, in terms of with legendary and then it was kind of a process of seeing what the top affiliates were doing and how i could pretty much emulate the same until i kind of got a full grasp of what i needed to do to take it to the next level i love that man um i, I like what you said before too i mean you've tried kind of a lot of business models like drop shipping and uh you know that's that's actually how i started man i've i've been trying to get out of my job like for years bro and I started drop shipping and like it was harder than the actual job. Like I was over here doing refunds and all this stuff. That's why I love affiliate marketing. So that's cool to know, bro. Well, I'm really, really proud of you and what you've done and uh, what you've accomplished. But um, real quick, before we get into the actual training, I see a lot of people commenting. So uh, thank you guys for commenting. But uh, how did you how did you grow? <clears throat> how did you grow so fast in just these few months? Was it TikTok? Was it YouTube? Like what were you doing? to grow so fast. And I know this is kind of kind of lead into the training, right? The training on how to get buyers to your affiliate links. Um, but kind of tell us a little bit about that. Um, it was really, you know, just a focus of, um, I guess, trying to like, 
stick to one thing. My biggest issue, aside from not knowing what I was doing, is I would try so many different things. I would try even you know, four different methods in the span of one week, just trying to figure out affiliate marketing. So I told myself the key to growth was going to be sticking to one platform, whether I make it or not. And TikTok, like you said, was kind of the one platform that I decided to stick on originally. I'm kind of working on the YouTube thing now, but um, TikTok was like the first platform. I was like, you know what? A month. Let's just see what happens in a month if you just go all in. And that was kind of the first thing. And then I kind of, you know, TikTok's algorithm, I kind of got introduced to people who were doing the same thing. So I started studying their funnels, studying their emails and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, if this is working for them, don't copy it, but see why it's working for them and then kind of make it your own. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, man. And that's, that's actually huge. Um, when I first started, that's exactly what I did as well as you want to model what all other people are doing, right? You want to model success, right? Not copy, but actually like, you know, see what they're doing, see as far as the content and then model it in your own way. So that's awesome, man. I love it. So what are you going to be teaching us today, man? Like what's, uh, what's the main topic? I know everyone's excited. We got a lot of people on live. So what are we going to be teaching? What are you teaching us? Today, I'm going to be going over copywriting and basically my seven step formula to how I write emails to get buyers to go back to my link um, without, you know, sounding spammy or salesy, yeah. like just being able to connect with them on a deeper level. Yeah. And I think, um, I think copywriting is huge, man. I think like a lot of people don't realize how important copywriting is not only with email, but the way you speak to your audience on YouTube or TikTok, um, they're following you because of you. So you want to be able to speak to them at their level. So copywriting is really, really huge. That's actually what I'm trying to work on as far as a skill. I didn't work on that when I first started, man. Like I was just all about, you know, let's get, let's get the right funnel, right? Let's get the right, right. uh, product i mean yes you do need a good funnel you need a good product but at the end of the day i think copywriting is the most important high ticket skill to have in this business and i see you crushing it man i see you uh, with the videos with your lives and you you speak very very like right to your audience so that, that's why they're actually taking action so yeah man let's uh let's get into it bro like uh, do you want to share your screen or how do you want to do this yeah i can share my screen uh right there Right. And guys, so uh, if you guys have any questions about anything Daryl's going over, uh, he has, uh, we're going to do Q&A in the middle of the training and then Q&A at the end. So you guys could ask questions and then we'll we'll go ahead and answer them uh, in the middle and at the end. So go ahead and get started, man. I'll, uh, I'll show your screen now. All right. Let's go ahead, get over here, go back and present. <laughs> I like that plaque in the back, bro. <laughs> yeah, good. I gotta find somewhere to put it. Gotta find somewhere to put it. <laughs> For sure. All right. Because right. so, I don't have the. It's good. Oh yeah, yeah. What was that? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. All right. Cool. So, like I said, today we're gonna be going over how to get buyers to your affiliate links and to take action um, once they get there. And I call this the unappreciated sales king. Copywriting, in my opinion, is the most important but least talked about skill set to have that even myself, like I underappreciated it for the like Jonathan said, I was so worried about what funnel do I use? What funnel builder do I use? And the truth is, like, none of that stuff should matter because even when you build the funnel, there's still elements of copywriting that go into it. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now, like I said, a little bit about myself, 17 year old entrepreneur. Um, like I said, I played basketball. No other pitcher. We all mean mugging. We had just lost in the championship um, down in Austin. But, you know, those are some pictures, a little bit of me right there holding the plaque. And then there's me right there. But, you know, so like I said, copywriting and email marketing is what I want to talk about. But not just email marketing and copywriting, because the truth is, like, you can write you can write emails all day long. But if you can't connect with a person that, like, it goes on a deeper level and tell them a story that like appeals to their problems. They're not going to buy from you. I tell people, people, beginners, adults, kids all the time, people don't spend money just to spend money. They spend money because they have a problem that needs to be solved. Right. No matter what it is, if they like, even if their problem is a want, they buy the new Jordans because they want Jordan. So the problem is they want Jordan. So they go buy the Jordans. They don't just spend money to spend money. Like, even as ill-advised as people's purchases are, they're solving a problem or what they believe to be a problem. They don't just spend money. So we've got to be able to tell the story that's going to get our buyers over the hump because 
you can list facts all day, but if you can't get them over the hump, they'll never actually jump in. So you want them to actually believe that you stand for whatever you're like, whatever you're promoting. So that's why, like we talked about, having a product is key because having a good product is you have to be able to stand behind that product because you're going to be writing emails. You're going to be creating content. And a lot of people I hear them say, well, what if I'm just running Facebook ads? What if I'm just running Facebook ads? The most common type of Facebook ads is someone telling a story, leading them to an opt in page. Right. Or once they run their Facebook ads, you're still going to have to send emails. So no matter what, if you can't stand behind that product, you're going to struggle. So. That being said, like here is basically my seven step formula. I don't like wasting a lot of time, so I'm gonna just give it to you. So the first thing is you need to have a strong headline. Like so many people that kind of write these bland headlines that don't really grab attention. I know personally being, you know, a teenager, people's attention spans are not that long. I'm my phone sits on do not disturb all day. I swipe down to look at notifications. And if it doesn't grab my eye, I go back to whatever I'm doing on my phone. So your headline is going to have to grab someone's attention. You can't come in there with some bland headline that or some uncertain headline that doesn't really tell people what you're going to be talking about. The next thing is uh, you need to have a question related to the headline or hook them in. Right. Some type of intro that goes directly with the headline and doesn't waste a lot of time. And you need to go into the topic immediately. Don't fluff. Right. Like I said, people's attention spans are short. If you start talking about how you went from zero to twenty thousand dollars in four months and then you start fluffing it out about your journey, like people aren't going to read that because if they're trying to make money online, they're trying to figure out how did you get to twenty thousand dollars. So don't be fluffing your emails with a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. The next thing is I should have done these transitions shorter, but give overview and tell a brief story. But you want to when you tell your brief story, obviously, it's not going to be the 30 minute conversation that you will have. If you're sitting face to face. You want them to be able to read it in maybe two to five minutes at like five is really pushing it. But you want to be able, them to be able to read it and connect with them on a deeper personal level. Um, and like I said, you can either give an overview or you want to get tell that story to connect with them and appeal to their problems, appeal to how you can give them a solution. Um, the next thing is you really need to introduce the product. Don't go in there vague because people don't know, right? Like they're uncertain. One of the things I tell people all the time is when you have a question, you go watch a video. Like when someone has a question, they watch a video, they'll develop another question and then they'll go and they'll just keep bouncing around looking at all these different solutions and don't know which one they should go with. So you want to introduce your product. You don't want to say, I have the solution. You want to say, this is why this product is the answer, right? Because the next thing is you want to give a strong call to action because people don't know where they want to go. Like I said, if you leave it up to them, they will research after research after research after research, and they will never do anything because it's the element of fear and uncertainty. The reason they're asking questions in the first place, because to anyone who's done affiliate marketing, what's the first thing we tell someone else who's trying to get the hardest part is just getting started. Once you get started, it's not even that complicated, but people are so uncertain. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they want to do. So you have to tell them what to do. You have to be strong with it. It can't just be some vague call to action. Then obviously you want to sign off and say goodbye to them as well as welcome questions back to yourself. Because remember with affiliate marketing, the last affiliate link clicked gets the commission. So let's say I write this brilliant email, but they have this one specific question and I'm, I'm not inviting them back. I'm kind of just forcing the product on them. I'm not saying, hey, ask me any questions. What happens if they go to someone like Jonathan and ask them the question and then we're promoting the same product so they end up buying from his affiliate link? So you always want to invite questions back to you. So that way, A, when they're replying to the email, you're just replying. So it's not hard for them to go back to find the affiliate link anyways. Make life easier on yourself. So with that being said, like there any questions over that? Because I'm going to show an email example. So I kind of want to. Um, I kind um, of want to. Do that. I don't see any particular questions. Let, let us know, guys, if you have any questions about his seven steps so far so we can answer them right now. If not, he'll go into actual examples. But um, we'll wait just a second here. I do see some who see just what's going on, guys. So many people worry about what to use. It's the least important piece of the business. Which is, I think she's referring to copywriting. Um, cool, cool, man. Uh, I, I don't think there's any questions so far. So go ahead and just go into the examples. I'm definitely excited to look at what uh, what examples you have. So go ahead, man. Cool, cool. All right. So 
I'm gonna just leave it like this. So I ain't gotta wait. But uh, yeah, we'll do it this way. So here's an email that I wrote. I think it was like last week, and I sent this to a test group just to, um, because I had been testing out different things in my emails, and I wanted to test this out. And this email actually performed pretty well. We'll get into the specific stats of it later. But basically, this is the subject line. I was just like you until this happened. So here I was six months into the journey that was supposed to change my life. I'm sitting in a beanbag chair before it busted, LOL, thinking, what am I going to do? I'll be 18 in less than a year and I still haven't gotten anywhere. That's all I could think to myself. So the reason I wrote that particular portion is because, right, I have to connect, right? I said I was just like you, a person who's in a nine to five, someone who's my age is sitting there thinking like, I don't want to go to college, right? They're trying to figure out how to tell their mom they didn't want to go to college, but they don't have a plan. So I'm basically relating to them off the top saying, I was just like you when I was six months into my journey saying, how was I going to figure this out, right? Like, what was I going to do to get myself to the next step to actually start seeing success, right? So I'm inviting them into my world. Like, you want to get specific, but you don't want to fluff. Remember, you want to be as specific as possible because I'm using descriptive words as in I'm sitting in my beanbag chair before it busted. So now you can just imagine me sitting in my beanbag chair thinking to myself, what am I going to do? Right. So the next part reads a few minutes later, while I'm thinking to myself, wondering if I'm just wasting time, I got a FaceTime call. It was from my friend, Nay, even though her name in my phone is saved as big sister, since that's what she's like to me since I'm the oldest. So now. Right. Like you don't know who Nay is. Right. Like you don't know who that is. But. If I were to say, oh, Nay's calling me, you'd be like, oh, that's his big sister, right? Like, because you're reading this, you'd be like, okay, to him, that's like his big sister, right? So I'm inviting you into my world. I'm showing you that I'm a real person. I'm not some guy or girl who's like just woke up one night and made a million dollars, right? Like, I'm showing you that I was in a normal spot with, you know, nicknames in my phone for people sitting on my phone, answering FaceTime calls. I'm not some guy who's flashing a million dollars in a Lamborghini. Like I'm sitting in my room doing things that normal people probably do. So long story short, she called to ask if I want to apply to work with her at the Sonic up the street from our street. Now I was supposed to say from our houses because we live on the same street, but same thing. Um, I told her I look into it because by this time I was just desperate for a solution. So now I'm appealing to the fact that they're frustrated, right? Like six months into a journey that's supposed to change your life, supposedly on day one by what everyone tells you when you first hear about this. Six months into the journey, I'm desperate for a solution because I still haven't figured it out. So, but I just remember having this feeling like this strange feeling in my gut that affiliate marketing was still my answer. And if I took that job, I regret giving up on the one thing that was leading me to what I wanted to be free from the system, the 40 year commitment to uncertainty, you know, the possibilities of going home tonight only to get laid off tomorrow. I knew I couldn't trust the job. I knew I was capable of success, but I also knew I needed the guidance. Now, the reason I wrote that part is because a lot of people when they get into affiliate marketing, and I know this from doing a lot of TikTok lives, a common thing that people say is, Do I really need a course to be successful in affiliate marketing? Can I just learn from YouTube? Can I just learn for free? Can I do I have to pay for click funnels? Do I have to pay for builder or do I have to pay for get response? Right. They're trying to get rid of all the assistance. They just want to kind of go out, find a product and start promoting. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm saying is six months into my journey by now, I know I need the guidance. I see why you need the guidance because. I have been doing this for six months and now I'm frustrated, right? I'm desperate for a solution. So the next part is because I didn't want to go through another six months of frustration, depression, and anxiety about starting a business online. Not to mention I already have health health issues. Um, So then I wanted to follow the path of someone who'd been where I was and made it to the other side, much like you, I'd imagine. That's the real reason I turned to Dave Sharp in the 15 day challenge. The fact that he went from homeless drug addict to success was the proof that I needed that a teenager or adult can do this no matter the circumstances. Because the start is irrelevant because the goal at the end for us is the same, especially me and you. So if you're in the challenge, finish it. And if you haven't started, I was supposed to say if you haven't started, start now. But that just shows I'm not perfect even when writing emails. And as always, let me know if I can help with anything. So 
the reason like I wrote this email when I sat down at the computer, I was like, how can I appeal to those people who want to start this? And like they're asked because every day I get the same question, you know, what's the best way for me to start? I'm unsure of the best way for me to start. How could I show them that trying to just start marketing on day one is not what you want to do? Like, how could I appeal from what I did in my journey to appeal to, hey, you do this guidance and as well as promote my affiliate product? So I wrote this email to go at slow down, slow down, because if you're like me, you'll be six months into your journey frustrated because you still haven't had your breakthrough yet. That's the reason I turned to Dave Sharp because he gave me the foundation of what I needed to start building a business. That was basically the entire intent of this email. So, you know, that's great and all, but how did this email perform, right? Like since I sent it to a small group of people, I this email was originally sent to 431 people as a segmented broadcast email originally. 84 people opened the campaign within the first two days. That's a 19% open rate and a 22% click through rate, which obviously once more people get the email, that'll tailor down some, but that's not bad considering it also had a 10 out of 10 spam score. And the reason why is because I'm telling my story without having to use business opportunity, yeah. um, financial freedom, free training. Like I'm telling my story without having to use words like marketing that set off trend, like, that set off um, spam filters and I'm just connecting with them on a one-on-one -on -one personal level. So it's like, it's almost like it's just a normal conversation. And I, as you know, you talk to people every day, so there's nothing spammy about having a conversation. That is why writing these type of emails tend to do better just in terms of not going to spam because you're not trying to figure out how to fit marketing in and affiliate marketing and breakthrough and make your first a thousand. You're just telling a story that still represents the same thing as saying how I made my first thousand dollars online, how I had my financial breakthrough with my online business. I'm telling you the same thing without using any of those words. And in return, it helps you keep your emails out of spam. So the four key takeaways that I have from this is tell stories because facts are boring. Like when you tell people facts, it's, oh, okay, I'll look into it, but they're not really enticed to do anything right like if there's no connection to it it's like oh cool right the next thing is you want to open up shallow and soft stories telling people oh well, i was sad i was it was a tough process but then i found like if you go from it was a tough process to then i found my solution within like two lines you're not opening up enough right like trust me people want to hear your story that's the reason they attend your lives that's the reason they watch your tiktoks that's the reason they watch your YouTube videos because they want to hear what you did and how they can avoid the mistakes you made. One of the most common questions that any affiliate will tell you someone asks them is, what are the mistakes you made so I know what to avoid? So if you tell your story for the things you've done, the mistakes you made, and how you corrected those mistakes, that's going to appeal more than just saying, oh, it was a tough journey. Then I took the challenge and now all of a sudden it made sense, right? Like people want to know in depth what you were feeling in that moment. They want to know that you were desperate. They want to know that you were frustrated. They want to know that you were anxious to get those results, but you couldn't figure out how to do it. The next thing is avoid listing everything on the sales page. If you notice, I promoted the 15 day challenge by literally the only thing I said about the 15 day challenge was the 15 day challenge in Dave Sharp. I didn't say that they offer you a business plan advisor. I didn't say that you're going to learn the four core high ticket business models because that's irrelevant. Nobody cares what it's offering if there's no story on how it benefited someone. So you don't want to avoid listing all the benefits of a product. You want to, you know, go in depth and actually tell a story that relates to the product. And then last but not least, definitely not least, avoid writing emails and copy that only you would take action on and buy from. And the reason I say this is because once you become an affiliate marketer, right, and you've invested in a few courses, what happens is like me. If someone says I'm offering a course and they tell you the benefits of this course, like they basically list what's on the sales page, me being the experienced affiliate sees the value in buying a course. Mm -hmm. The person on the other side is sitting there thinking, why do I need a course? Because 99, I'm pretty sure about 99% of people who start looking at the online business originally start saying with courses are scams, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if you only appeal to you thinking that a course or whatever you're promoting is has a benefit based on what they say on the sales page, 
you are closing yourself off from pretty much every other market outside of people who think like you, which that can really hurt your marketing because now you have most of the time an email list or you know a following that's useless because most people don't start out thinking like you. Even when it comes to health and fitness, if you see the benefit of getting a personal trainer, but someone who says they want to get six pack abs, but doesn't want to get a personal trainer, if they don't see the benefit of that personal trainer, but you only write emails for people who see the benefit in personal trainers, you'll never be able to sell to that person. So you don't want to avoid, you want to avoid writing emails and copy that only you would buy from. And that's pretty much all I have. It's pretty straightforward. If you can follow those seven steps, you should have no problem writing emails that a don't go to spam and B allow people to see, okay, this is bigger than just Dave Sharp in the 15 day challenge. This flipped this dude's life around. He did a 180, you know, just by starting this simple 15 day challenge because he went from someone who was frustrated to someone who actually knew what the heck he was trying to get accomplished. So that's pretty much all I have um, for yeah. you guys. Questions. That's incredible, man. That I really appreciate you actually sharing the emails because we could actually see the seven step in process. Um, but like, I mean, the biggest thing I took away from that was like you really connected with your story. You never talked about uh, making money online or affiliate marketing or nothing really, man. You just literally just said, you know, you bridged the gap on how it changed your life. And then, hey, this is how I did it. Right. Or this is the this is the 15 day challenge, whatever. But I really liked how you you took them on this journey. Right. It all started. Look. And then you ask the question, right? Part of the seven steps. But then you went into your story. You actually, I like how you really brought out the emotion. Like I was sitting on my beanbag. I fell in like, like, it's funny. Like, it's like, what, what happened here? And then you, you just like, you're just keep reading, man. Like that was brilliant. Like that's, that's really, really brilliant. Is this like what you do in your broadcast or your autoresponders or both? Um, usually like when people come to the welcome series, it's kind of 15 day challenge, a lot of trainings related to the 15 yeah. day challenge. And right. then in broadcast, it's more of the storytelling, how these products benefited me, um, type emails. Cool. Cool, man. That's, that's awesome. I have some questions here. So, uh, let's start with, uh, let's see here. So this is a great question right here. So how do you connect a story when you have not succeeded in this business yet? So yeah, man, this is a great question. So. That's a really great question because a lot of people are like, how do I promote make money online or how do I tell a story when I don't have, you know, a plaque sitting behind me or whatever it is. The truth is, like, that's in my opinion, that's more why beginners have the advantage, because when I tell a story and you do see this plaque behind me, it's kind of intimidating to the new person. Right. The new person is like, well, this person like he's telling a story from success side. We don't know what it actually took. Is it actually something a beginner could do you without having the success story your story can basically um you know connect with them because it's like i was in a bad situation and i started my online business because i was tired of depending on one income so now you can say i'm building a business right i'm starting to build assets in terms of email lists i'm starting to see the growth of my labor and what they're teaching in this program or whatever it is, is actually working for me. And people can be more, a little bit more relatable to you because you're still that beginner. It's kind of the same thing between Jonathan's fairly new, but I'd say probably Brian Brewer. Brian Brewer has been doing this for eight years, right? So when he tells his story to the beginner, it's like, okay, you see the success. So, you know, it's a possibility, but you're wondering, can a beginner come in and do the same thing? So with me and Jonathan being fairly much newer to the game, if we were to tell our story with me saying, hey, I took this course five months ago and this is what I've been able to achieve. Someone's like, OK, within five months, a beginner can see results because he was a beginner five months ago and was able to build results. So it's more about being relatable as to where you are in your journey and not because, like I said, if you notice, I didn't say how much money I made. I didn't say all of those things. It was just. I was in a position where I didn't know what I was doing and I hadn't gotten anywhere. Then I took this and now I'm going somewhere. It was more of that perspective as to here's how I'm making $15,000 a month. Here's how I'm making blah, 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 blah. Here's how I'm a three time. It, because people don't care about that once again, unless there's a story of how you got there. That stuff is irrelevant to them because it's like, oh, now you're just bragging about your awards. So that's kind of how you tell your story. You more so do it about the journey that you went on 
as opposed to the end result. Yeah, great, man. Really, really good. Um, let's see, I have a question here by Nicole. Uh, just want to ask if it works effectively for you about the get response funnels. Uh, I'm not too sure what he's asking. Did, did you get that? Just wanted to ask if it works effectively for you about the get response funnels. I don't use get response, but I don't quite get the, like, I don't use get response anymore, but. Yeah, um, I mean, I the seven steps works with anything. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't it matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. At the end of the day, um, the high ticket skill here is to copyright. And so that's really right. what I want you guys to understand, right? And I don't know if you guys watched the beginning of this video, but basically, like when I first started, I was just always worried about, give me the right funnel. Like this funnel's not making money. But at the end of the day, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't speaking to my audience. Um, I wasn't pulling out the emotion. Uh, I was just like, give me the right funnel, give me the right tool. So guys, you do need the tools, right? Obviously you do need the tools to build your email list, all that good stuff. But the high ticket skill here is, is learning copywriting and learning Daryl's seven steps on how does he get people to click his links, to open his emails, and actually buy the product, right? He takes them through this journey though, like it's brilliant. Like it all starts with the headline, the, the actual, like they have to open up the email and then once they open up the email, then they have to read the email, then they have to click the link at the bottom. I think he had like a 20 some percent click through rate. That's incredible, man. that's awesome. So yeah, so guys, I really want you guys to focus on the high ticket skill. I know a lot of my audience are newer. Um, you know, they may be in my program, they're just starting affiliate marketing, they're just starting their funnels, their emails, and I know how it is, right? I know that that's kind of the most frustrating part when you get started, the technical part. But once you guys that have that done, that's all you need to worry about. All you guys have to worry about now is the copywriting. How do we speak to our audience? And that's what Daryl does an amazing job at. Really, really uh, impressed by what you've done. And let me see here. So I have a question here. Jose Santiago, so when do you start sending out your broadcast? I start sending broadcasts. So I have like a few that are set up as like autoresponder style right. email, just so that way I'm not um, dying to send an email if I forget. But I send out broadcasts pretty much after the first eight on the welcome series. I put them into a whole nother list and then I do broadcast and other emails over there. Cool, cool, man. Yeah, and I was, um, yeah. so you have like your autoresponder sequence where you kind of go into the actual product itself, right? And then you have your broadcast, mm -hmm. try to connect with them. Do you ever put your broadcast in your autoresponder? Like your story part? Um, like that email, um, I'm actually planning to do since it performed so well. I am planning to yeah. put that as autoresponder. No, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, because I mean, usually what I'll do is um, I'll kind of have my broadcast where it's like, you know, offer, offer, story, maybe one of my YouTube videos, and then I'll kind of cycle. I was just curious how you did it, but cool, man. Hey, we got Brian Brewer. What's up, my man? The legend Yo, himself. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Cool, guys. Is there any other questions? I don't know how much time you got, man, but I think we answered all the questions. If there's any last-minute questions, drop them down below. If you guys are watching this on the replay, uh, just type in a hashtag replay down below. If you're watching this on a live, type in a hashtag live. Um, let me see here. Uh, I, I don't see any other questions, bro. But um, while people are typing, where can we find you at, man? Where do you want people to find you? Do you want uh, – yeah, let us know. Um, you can – probably your best bet is to add me on Facebook. If you just search my name, you'll see either my page or my profile. So, yeah. Okay. And then, okay. I mean, I know you have a pretty large TikTok following, a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, that's you know, there as well. Cool, cool, man. All right. Well, I really appreciate this, man. This was uh, This was really, really good, like – Copyright is such a high ticket skill that most people don't realize. So um, really good training, bro. I really appreciate you coming on and teaching my audience. Guys, go follow Daryl on TikTok, YouTube. Go add him on Facebook. He has a Facebook group. This guy is doing amazing things. I'm really excited to see what you do, bro, in, in the next uh, the next year, man, in the next 10 years. I'm really excited to see what you do with your business. So thanks, thanks. again, man. Thanks. And is there any last words you want to say? Um, And if like, if you're in Jonathan's program, the 15 day challenge, anything, one of the things that um, Matt told me when I was going through copywriters playbook, well, kind of told me, but it was a recorded video. But he said, if you feel overwhelmed by something, start it. Like, I don't care what it is. Just start it. Don't ask another question. Start it. Figure out what you did wrong. Then ask the question, because at least if you're starting, you're taking action, right? You're learning from a mistake as of putting this hypothetical situation that you're going to get it wrong because most times 
people have these hypothetical questions as in like, what if I get this wrong? And then they end up doing it in the thing they thought they were going to get wrong. It's not even the thing they ended up getting wrong. So yeah. just start and then ask your questions. That way you're learning and also building for the future. Sweet, man. Really, really appreciate you coming on here. There's a few more questions if you want to answer any last minute things there. If not, we can go ahead and end it, man. I really, really appreciate you coming on, though. Is there anything there? Yeah, I see that one by Jose um, near oh, the bottom. Uh, so after you send out your product email and your story email, how do you introduce your audience to other products? Um, I usually like, so like I promote Builder All since that's what I build my funnels, do my email marketing with. Basically, what I do is I do one of two things. I either give them something like a template for free or I tell a story of how that product has benefited me, whether it's since Builder All a cheaper alternative to ClickFunnels, how it saved me money, how it's made all my tools in one spot. It's some type of story, maybe not maybe not as in depth, but kind of along the same lines as my main product. Yeah. I like, yeah, because you're you're always just talking about the benefits, right? Like the actual, like how did it help them, you know, do the thing that they need to do, right? So, cool, man. Well, thanks again, guys. Thank you guys for being on live with us. There will be a replay, and um, yeah, man. Well, thanks again for getting on. No problem. All right.